welcome to our channel in this session we will discuss the member function overloading what do you mean by this function overloading means overloading of a function is a function is defined a function is defined in multiple ways simply simply one single function has multiple definitions a function has multiple number of definitions that is called overloading here we are using in overloading remember the very important point the name of the function the name of the function is same if a function to be overloaded if a function to be overloaded one of the important point is the name of the function is same for all the functions next to differ in differ in either number of parameters either number of parameters or or data type of the parameters either the number of parameters or data type of the parameters okay in this way we are overloading the function differs in either name or member remember the function overloading does not depends on does not depend on return type function overloading does not depends on return type it depends only on the number of parameters and our data type of parameters are both okay okay now we will discuss an example then it is very easy to understand that is each and every concept understanding of example is important see class item i am considering the same example int quantity id public here no problem you can use the price also privilege okay float price so to specify more number of access specifiers i am writing this one see the example while read off while read off int x comma int y int x comma int y quantity is equal to x id is equal to y suppose the price is equal to 100 here what i am doing here read is the member function which contains two parameters x and y so at the time of calling at the time of this member function calling i am passing x and y values the x value is copied into quantity y value is copied into id and by default i am assigning some price value as 100.0 suppose another function y read off observe carefully the name of the function here no need of return type so please ignore the return type the name of the function read and read both are same that means i am performing i try to perform overloading so read off int x int x into y float z okay int x into y float z suppose the quantity is equal to x id is equal to y price is equal to z here i am passing three parameters and i am assigning to three value suppose consider void read of int x remember this x is different from this x y here i am declaring x inside the function i am declaring x inside the function once we comes out of the block there is no x that is x is local to this block i think you know the concept of local and global if you define the x inside a block that means x is local to this block once we comes out of the block there is no x that is the reason once again i am initializing declaring x okay int x 
quantity is equal to x suppose id is equal to someone price is equal to some 200.0 now void display simply display the value c out quantity id price close the class observe here what is overloading the name of the function is same with multiple definitions so here the name of the function is read here we have one type of definition here we have another type here we have another type so with same name multiple definitions now the question is whenever we are creating an object in main suppose i am creating an object item space i i is the object now the question is which read method we call so i dot read off whenever we are writing i dot read off which read method is called here it is the overloading concept that is based on the number of parameters or data type of the parameters based on the number of parameters or data type of the parameters the corresponding the corresponding function is called for example i dot read of 2 comma 3 whenever you are writing this statement what happens 2 is an integer 3 is an integer so the function contains two parameters and the two parameters are of integer types two parameters are of integer types so among these three this satisfied so two parameters two are of integer type so this function is called for this one i dot read of suppose 1 2 50.0 here i am passing three parameters no need to return in the same order you can write your own order also here i am passing three parameters one is integer second one is integer third one is float so this satisfied so this function is called i dot read of 5 so a single integer variable this one is called and finally i dot display got it how we call a overloaded function based on remember here i am differing only in the number of parameters differ only in the number of parameters we can differ in the data type of the parameters also suppose int x into y here you can write float x float y without using third variable float x and float y if you pass floating values this function is called based on again i am saying the return type and the number of parameters a function is overloaded okay this is the concept of overloading the member functions and here you have to observe one more point the functions are overloaded inside the class and outside the class also that is the concept of the definition of member functions inside and outside is also applicable how the same concept inside the class we are writing simply the declaration this line this one and this one and remember in the declaration we have to end it with semicolon how to end it with semicolon inside the class you are writing the three statements and outside the class again completely write this entire definition how before the class name sorry before the function name we have to write the class name item scope resolution operator and the member function this is the way to overload the member functions this is inside outside means simply remember the previous session how to define the functions outside the class the same concept is applicable at any way